Hey everybody, I'm Dane Sanders. I want to welcome you to Fast Track Coaching. This is episode, I'm not sure, 160 something, and we've been at this for quite a while. Uh, we've had photographers, uh, luminaries, uh, brilliant folks from all over the spectrum, and today is no exception, and I really hope you enjoy the show. For those of you who are new to Fast Track Coaching, let me get you up to speed really quick. Uh, the way it works is it's a conversation, like a, a coffee chat between me and someone who I think is uh, brilliant and could offer a lot of insight to help you move your creativity and your business forward just a little bit this week. And your job is to be as active as you can. So if you're watching this live, uh, you can watch that in the chat room. Uh, you can uh, Twitter about it afterwards. You can engage with any of us afterwards. Um, but the, the point of doing this is to engage the conversation and push things forward um, and we hope that this is helpful uh, in that direction. By the way, a quick note, um, the folks who underwrite this whole deal is a company called Adorama. So if you're a photographer and uh, you need to get gear, my encouragement is for you guys to support the folks that provide this kinds of content, uh, if indeed this is valuable to you. Well, my guest today is Jonathan Robert Willis. And uh, if you guys, um, if you're in the commercial world, I suspect you know who Jonathan is. But if you're not, uh, I think you're in for a treat, especially around the conversation about creating a unique style and look, especially from a minimalistic perspective. So without further ado, I want to invite uh, Jonathan to the show. Welcome, Jonathan. I, I don't see your face right now, and I think you have oh. to hit the camera button to pop on. And abracadabra, just there like that. Go. There you are. <laughs> so, <laughs> welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, 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 your name is listed as Laura Willis, which makes me think that you are you are indeed married. Is that I am, fair? yes. Uh -huh. Smoking hot. <laughs> I can relate. I can relate to that dilemma. Um, hey, uh, just a logistical request. The way that the camera will work when, when it splits for the replay is if you can stay close to center, that would be probably help, most helpful. Um, and I'll try and do the same as best I can. Um, but to introduce everyone to the show, I wanted to give you guys, um, uh, just actually give you the chance, uh, Jonathan, to just sh share a little bit on your journey as a photographer, and then I want to get into the topic at hand. So uh, what got you to today, and, and what are you up to photographically? Yeah, so I, uh, I began my journey as a photographer probably, man, almost 12 years ago, um, and when I stole my dad's Canon A1 and learned how to process, you know, film in my high school's darkroom. I was pretty much the only one that used it, uh, me and another another guy who's also a photographer. Hmm. Um, learn how to do everything totally wrong hmm. and still make a good print, which um, was, you know, print quality was always like, for even at a very young age, was really important to me. I think having seen great images, I've, I've always been aware of what a beautiful print could look like. I ended up going to school to learn more about the craft and kind hmm. of relearn how I did everything wrong. Um, got my start shooting film, emulating photographers like Michael Wilson, who's an amazing portrait photographer. Mm -hmm. um, fell in love with photographers like Henry Cartier-Bresson. Mm -hmm. uh, and the work of Annie Leibovitz was always really, um, it's just it kind of sticks out in my mind as a, as a huge influence. Uh, graduated school, got married, and got pregnant and <laughs> right away. And Congratulations. Had, I didn't know that you could pull that up. That's pretty yeah, good. Yeah, like we pulled it off in rapid succession. We have three kids and um, had three kids in the first four years of our, four and a half years of our marriage. So, wow. Um, it's busy. And, you know, I was the, the breadwinner for the, all that time and had no experience really professionally aside from little gigs that I'd pick up as a student um, making portraits and, uh, Mm -hmm. and, and whatnot, and um, nothing like the pressure of a hungry baby to encourage uh, productivity and and asking people to pay you to, to you know do what you do. So, um, well, it's an eclectic journey. I mean, even the way you're describing it. I, well, first off, what school did you go? Did you attend? Yeah, I went to a local college here in Kentucky, Northern Kentucky University. Nice and great, like hidden gem of a school. They had an amazing photography department, great resources. Barry Anderson had it heads up the department and just does an awesome job. So, oh, that's yeah. great. Well, so it's funny. Uh, in my, uh, I, I used to live in Santa Barbara, California, and that's where I got my start. I'm self-taught, though, and I didn't go to a place like Brooks, which is a, a, a photo school up in that town that's kind of famous. And in my, in the, in my book, I actually talk about this um, art, art school, uh, this place that, um, I mean, I make a bit of a caricature of it, but 
um, I was always jealous of the of the technique that was taught in that context, but was also a little bit probably judgmental of folks who graduated from those places, not universally, but in select moments where I'd, I'd see these people who were enthusiastic after the craft, like you were describing in your high school days, and then they would go to this environment and for this particular school, in my experience, um, a lot of the graduates kind of develop a little bit of a edge to them, a little bit of a, uh, well, I called it, I called it grumpy, uh, a little prima donna grumpiness, and and, and uh, I got in a lot of trouble for for asserting that idea. Uh, but as someone who is, you know, started self taught and then had the awesome opportunity to 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 learn it in a context like that, where you can kind of work out the kinks and and refine the craft in a particular direction. Um, I, I want to get an honest take. Like, did you find, and, and maybe this wasn't, you know, a specific, you know, art school per se, it was more of a department in the context of the college. Yeah. But uh, what was what was your perspective like bef- when you were just pure enthusiast in contrast with learning professional technique and then re- then going, kind of re-engaging the marketplace and, and having to play it. Was there any kind of cultural shifts that went on for you as you went through that progress? Uh, you know, I think I've always been really just hungry to, to create. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've always been very entrepreneurial. Hmm. So I, I don't know that my college experience, like my, my experience as a student was typical of... Mm-hmm. Um, of most, because I, I've 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 also seen sort of what you're describing mm-hmm. at some of the art schools, and am sort of chuckling because I can totally relate. But um, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I I kind of approached it as I, you know, I I looked at the people who were kind of lazy in my school and saw them like, well, I'm I'm kind of glad they're here because they're going to be working at the Walgreens <laughs> one hour photo <laughs> developing. You know, <laughs> that is so right. A discount, right? And uh, yeah, and. I, I um I, I don't know. I guess it, it kind of just came easy for me. I, I I wouldn't. My experience was great. I, I wish I was pushed a little further, and I wish that I had a few more connections out of school. I think that's what mm-hmm. a school like Brooks can offer that mm-hmm. maybe a smaller community school couldn't. But and I'm not even sure I answered your question at this point. But no, um, no, you, it was and it was more a curiosity thing because uh, it just seems like you have you have land, you know looking at your work and seeing the position you're in right now. Um, uh, you're in contrast to someone like again. It, I, I, it's a ridiculous stereotype, my assertion in in the book. It's, but I I love that you're breaking the stereotype and you're like, okay, yeah, I I love the craft. I cared enough about it to make an investment in myself. But I went in with my eyes wide open around this is still if I'm going to do it professionally, it's a business, and I'm going to be entrepreneurial in my pursuit of that enterprise, which is I think really smart. And yet, in the middle of it, you seem to, especially looking at your work, you seem to have done an amazing job of defining a style. Uh, and we're going to talk a lot about that kind of minimalistic uh, commitment that you have um, and how that plays out, especially in environmental portraiture. Um, and, and it's funny because, you know, I, I don't think you would classify yourself as a portrait artist per se. Uh, at least that's not how I've heard you describe it. By the way, is that my phone ringing? No, it's mine. Oh, oh, it's, it's wife. She always calls when these things happen. <laughs> I don't mind. It's great. Put her on the line. <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Go on. Oh well. No. No problem. So, um, anyways, if she calls again and you need a nine one one, feel free to pause. My dog comes in the room all the time during these interviews, and <laughs> I, I don't mind pausing for her. So, no problem. <laughs> um, uh, but my, what was my question? Um, I totally lost it. What I was saying. had to do with sort of, I, I think. Well, let me just try to answer what I th- what I think you were you were talking about. It's just how how I've sort of um, presented myself as an artist. I've I've always yeah. seen myself as an artist first, and anything that I've put out there, even from a marketing standpoint, early on, and 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 I think early on, I knew that there was a difference between technicians and artists. No doubt, technicians are hired to make an image that they're told to make. An artist, I felt, were hired to make an image that that they saw and they knew how to make. And so, anything that goes out there with my name on it is very much got my fingerprints all over it. Mm-hmm. And the journey of finding that voice, like, has taken has taken years into to the point where I feel like in the last two to three years, I've really clarified what it is that I have to offer, mm-hmm. you know, the, the photography community in terms of in terms of my voice. But um, 
that may may have answered the question we were sort of driving at. Well, but. it did, it did, and thank you for jogging my memory. But the it, that's the tension that I'm struck by is in looking at your work, you have a clear artistic bent, you have vision of what you want to accomplish, and you're employing the techniques to do that. And yet, you're a commercial shooter, editorial shooter. You, you have paid clients who hire you for a specific kind of thing. But you found this sweet spot where you get. It seems like, at least from your portfolio, it's. And we'll get to that in a second. It seems like you found this really great uh, tension point between being able to do what you want to do artistically, but actually in a marketplace that's going to pay you. Like not everyone gets to have Annie Leibovitz, like 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 be in Annie Leibovitz's position where she gets to you know go and take pictures of all these these folks that you you get to take these kinds of pictures of everyday people, but put your stylized picture on it. At least that's what I make up when I look yeah. at your work. It's it's pretty fantastic. Well, thank you. I, I'm getting a little bit of a glitch on the screen. Is is it frozen on your end? It's not frozen. Am I frozen to you? Are we caught up? I think we're caught up now. Um, okay, sweet. It, it it didn't break on my <laughs> end, so so we should be okay. <laughs> okay, that's must, okay. That's good. So, well, yeah. I mean, yeah. That's that's always been that's always been very very intentional and sort of get you know, sort of getting there. I, I feel like. As I think about my, my work and my craft, um, it's almost as though I'm very interested in like in the social aspects of making a, photo a photograph or just the relational dynamics that that are required to make an, an, an image an image that's some like some of the stuff that I do. And, and the photograph ends up almost being the byproduct of that hmm. you know that journey of uh, psychologically speaking. Mm -hmm. um, but that combination of kind of entrepreneurial but, uh, but I also do like apply a lot of specific technique to the way I right yeah yeah, well, yeah. it's that it's again I, I think you're right like it's well let's do this let's actually pause on my musings on entrepreneurialism and art artistry I want to sure. look at your work and I want to hear you talk about it a little bit so um, I went ahead and pulled your website up on my screen here I'm gonna pull it up and I want you to talk to us a little bit about about what your intentions were with with an image like this, and um, uh, yeah, yeah, kind of what your thinking was in creating this image. And and if you're at home and you're watching this and the image is too blurry and you want to check it out some other way, just go ahead and uh, log on to jonbob.com, which is Jonathan Robert Willis's website, and you'll be able to at least see from the pixelated image what we're talking about and and can track it. So go ahead and talk a little bit about what your intentions were here, because I want to especially get to this conversation around minimalism. Yeah. So this particular image of, of the nun was shot. Um, it was actually shot on location. We brought the studio to the location, and um, this is a, a lady who works a lot with injustice and uh, people uh, that are on death row, mm -hmm. and just kind of pr does praise and does petitions for them and that sort of thing. Um, so my my goal here was really, you know, how can we photograph her in a way that just in, invokes like her heroic um, nature in, in, in a quiet sort of place. And it was really important for me to go to the place where she prays and the place where she does this work, hmm. um, at least in terms of like the community center and the office. So we, we, we relocated the studio there. And I, I'm very, very much interested in, in what's happening in the face. And, and when you make simple images, um, everything counts. Mm -hmm. So the co the color of her, and this just happened to be an editorial shoot. And a lot of times when you go on an ed editorial shoot, uh, there's a lot of open ended, you know, um, things in terms of like what they're wearing. As much as you you coach or, or direct mm -hmm. people, um, mm -hmm. so it, this this worked out where she just she showed up and what she had on just she was very presentable and she she looked really good. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I I we we worked with some other shots where they're very engaged in the eyes because I, you know, they say the eyes are the winner to the soul. And mm -hmm. we, we, um, in fact, I think that was actually the image they ran a real, a real tight shot of her, of her face that was lit with very, you know, it, with one light with very shallow depth of field. Mm -hmm. But, um, with, with this, this moment, I just wanted to sort of get her to the place where she just feels totally at peace and, and, and just 
having her close her eyes and you know almost just engage in the process of prayer like she does for these these people and um that was sort of like what what led us here and it, it all just kind of came together you know it, it, you step back and you see there's like five lights set up and mm -hmm. you know my system we're in this in this classroom but um you know it's it's i i try to in a shot like this, I try to let my tone and my presence there mirror that of what I'm trying to. And I think that as photographers, maybe that's a default sort mm -hmm. of uh, process. But so I know that like the 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 tone of how I approached her and how I approached um, the shot, like everything kind of went very subtle and very quiet. So mm -hmm. so yeah, that's brilliant. I mean, I think you know the light and the darkness, what she's up to, her lack of self importance. Uh, th their use of light to create separation, um, the attention, the simple, you know, leading lines even to the cross and what she's about and, and the line of the cross to the prayer. And it's fantastic. It's great work. Man. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, man. Um, well, OK, so there's these kinds of images, but then you also do these cool uh, personal projects. Like, for example, uh, one of the ones that I love on your site is this wind project that you have here. And, yeah. and, and maybe people are paying you for it. I don't know. But uh, I think yeah. it's awesome. <laughs> Um, let me see here. Uh, there we go. And I'll there just, you go. Uh, as I'm putting the, I'll just kind of jam through a couple of them for people to see. Uh, yeah. So the, the, first of all, for me, it's almost all about personal projects. If you want, I, I want people to hire me, like I said earlier, because of my style. So I, that's not a default sort of thing. Sorry, sorry. I couldn't resist. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's exactly it. So, um, so yeah, so this project came from a photo that I actually saw on Facebook that somebody had taken on New Year's Eve where they were walking around with a, a blower. It was more just like a snapshot. Uh -huh. And I thought, oh, my gosh, that's a brilliant idea. So I, I, bought, I went out and bought a, 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 a power vacuum thing and, and, and some extensions for it. And, and we set up some lights in the studio, and I sent out a very vague request to a number of friends saying who wants to come down to have their portrait taken all I know is that there is going to be high powered wind and that was really it it was just you know I, I bought the thing I set up the lights and I made a phone call and had about 15 people show up in the first day and we just blasted them just oh. absolutely blasted them and I, and I love how in terms of like limitations I, I'm, I'm a huge believer in setting up personal projects and putting boundaries around them and, and, and you know we talked earlier about my 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 artistic pursuit starting in high school. In high school, there, there was this poster on the wall that said, creativity cannot exist without limitations. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of been core to my, my beliefs all along. So, um, so this was like, you know, that we're just limiting to the, to the face. And mm -hmm. the, the other thing that I, that I did with this one, I, I see myself very much as a director when I'm, when I'm establishing like the shot. Mm -hmm. um, I do at some point sort of like let it go and let the thing happen. But with this, I let go almost even before we, we started taking because when you're blasting somebody in the face with a huge force of wind, there is like can, it's you can't control it. And you sort of like let go to letting the wind control the shot. And um, I would do things like make adjustments like, you know, maybe turn your shoulder and try to look over here. Mm -hmm. But really it was about that. That's that was what it was about for me it was about letting go and seeing seeing what can happen we just when we just contort the face you know with the source that i can barely control so yeah well it's funny like even like from a technical perspective i mean it looks like you're very consistent in your lighting uh you know you can see the very pores you can uh this one is not as evident but like there's a little even catch light in that split kind of sliver of an eye in there so obviously you have some kind of key light and kind of cross lighting and so you're yeah. always in this black backdrop with, and it looks like there's even some rim light in it. Um, talk a little bit about, uh, like, thematically, was it important for you to be consistent, like always a black backdrop, uh, always a similar lighting setup? Uh, are those the kinds of limits that you mean when you say you're limiting what you're accomplishing and then trying within that limit trying to do something? Or, or say a little bit more about that, because I want to, for folks yeah, at home, because Folks at home are literally, they're thinking, they're seeing this and they're going, oh, I'm going to emulate this project or maybe do something even better for themselves because it's something that comes out of them. Uh, yeah. Talk to them a little bit about setting those limits concretely. What do you do? 
Well, like w with this one, it was it was just that it was you know a black background. It's ju limited just to the face. You know, we didn't shoot bodies, we didn't shoot arms, we didn't add props. Mm -hmm. It was really like like that's all that that was all that I had to work with was, was the face. Mm -hmm. And and you know the the lighting was such just to sort of fit kind of my approach and my style and my aesthetic. Um, <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so I mean, yeah, that that was in in, in this one that that was the limitation. There's another project that, that we can certainly talk about down the road that that is really bound by a set of rules and a set of limitations, which is down the side of my website called Notebooks, mm -hmm. um, which is well, very different from Portraits. But we we can get there in a little bit. But well, um, well, keep talking because I, I'm actually going to go there as we're talking because okay. Uh, but but so so the tech the, there's definitely people in the chat room right now who are and you can write this to them because you're watching this live with them. Sure. But but uh, they're asking what exactly lighting did you have set up for the shot or these sets of shots? Yeah. yeah this th this has like two I think two strip lights right behind the shoulders, mm -hmm. um, a couple of feet away. The key light is actually with. Um, uh, I think it had a no. I know it had a, a Westcott umbrella. It's like mm -hmm. a pearlescent. Yep. Um, I just love the way that that umbrella treats the skin. Mm -hmm. The difficulty, though, in shooting an umbrella with a high-powered wind source is we've all seen funny photos. <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining umbrellas in New York City, you know, and high right. wind. Uh, we almost lost one of my pro photo uh, lights due to the thing blowing over, but. Huh. My assistant reacted fast, so we're good. Nice. Um, and then there was just a large softbox filling. I think the the, I think it would be the left side, yeah. you know, back away. So just kind of you know wrapped in light. I'm pretty sure there was also a bounce reflector underneath the chin to soften yeah. those highlights. Mm -hmm. And um, and that umbrella light that is the key was was pretty pretty close, and almost. I mean, if you could, I think that person could have, if they just would have reached out uh -huh. right above them, they would have touched it, you know. Right, right, right. So the light, the light was wrapped around them pretty tight. Was there any separation light between the subject and the backdrop? Uh, the, separate like that, a light. Was it? Well, did you you said the strip lights where they were over the the, behind the shoulders. Yeah, got it. Kind of putting an edge on the on the people. Got it. Got it. Got it. Very cool. So Very yeah, cool. that's how. That and that's actually a similar lighting recipe to that that nun shot too. For those who are interested in how we shot that, except for that was probably shot with the beauty dish. Uh -huh. um, but other than that, like it was pr pretty similar. Okay, so let's talk about this these so, notebook this notebook project because these are interesting to me in that now these are more of a um, a series. And you said you had specific rules. Did, did the rules? Get, do they emerge after you started shooting them and you said you named them in retrospect or did you go in saying, no, these are the limits I'm going to set for myself for these projects? Yeah, I think th the rules and, and limits sort of were established probably after the second time I, I did this. I, I was traveling a lot shooting for um, for a client and going to all these small town America, you know, places and, um, oh, there's some uh, bigger cities in there too, but uh, was doing really boring work and uh -huh. in these really interesting little Americana places, and so I uh, was, you know, I felt like I've I've got a, I've, every time I do a job, I want to bring something home that mm -hmm. I feel really proud of, and so um, I decided that I was going to take a walk. I was going to walk for an hour, and I'd always fly in early or or fly in late so I could fit my hour in, and I would force myself because I also noticed that like I wasn't just going out and shooting and when I was I would look at something and go uh, you know I'm not sure I really want to push the button because I have to edit it and uh, I'm not crazy about the shot and this was just throwing that uh, throwing that out so I forced myself to walk for at least one hour hmm. I um, forced myself to make at least 120 shoot 120 frames mm -hmm. um, I also limited myself to one lens I had a, the 50 millimeter lens on my camera because mm -hmm. that was sort of the the camera body that I learned on um, and set out to, to in, in with this belief that there are great images everywhere mm -hmm. so this became a discipline of, of learning how to see wherever I was to find a great image um, learning how to shoot just for the sake of shooting and then it also became a rule of editing so hmm. I would shoot 120 frames but I would only keep 12 and I would as hmm. a discipline 
delete everything else. Hmm. And it wasn't that I was keeping the absolute best images, but I was keeping the 12 images that told the best story or made hmm. the best sort of layout. Hmm. And it just became a practice that I did, um, you know, over the course of about two years as I traveled around. So. Hmm. Um, and it, you know, made me look forward to going and shooting maybe a not very interesting assignment, but knowing that I had a new sort of place to explore. Mm. So, so in all these cases, it just it's striking to me, um, and I'm taking my earpiece out because I'm realizing I, I think I just heard the FedEx guy pull up or something. So I just want I might okay. have I might have to cut up myself uh, for a second, Sweet. but. Um, uh, it seems like your whole website is personal projects. <laughs> but I mean, clear, <laughs> what's great though is like you go to campaign print. I, this is actually what was really striking me about your site was I was like, this is awesome. It's your your whole site is in fact minimalistic. It reminds me a lot of Jeremy Coward's space, and it the images are you know highly you you have a clear committed style. Whether you're have images in Haiti or Mumbai or simple portraits or your wind project or whatever it is, and then. Then you click on the campaign print, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, somebody paid for all these, or like a bunch of them, yeah. and and, yes. and all of a sudden I see like this image in a context where, wow, this this is a great stylized image. It's totally in line with what you do. I could totally see a client yeah. seeing your work and going, oh, I want that kind of thing, and then hiring you to go to do it. Is that the kind? And this is actually where we're going to turn a corner a little bit and talking to the folks at home. Is this the kind of thing that is actually viable, where someone can actually? commit to a style, a focused, disciplined, limited even, um, approach to the craft, but then build that style in such a way that they can be attractive to paying clients uh, in, 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 your, in your genre of choice? Or is this only limited to kind of your style? Like what, what do you think? If you're talking to somebody else who's just starting up, and I know you get in these conversations all the time with yeah. photographers who, are, who are, aspire to things that you've been doing, they're drawn to you for whatever reason. What do you tell them around this kind of creative act around personal projects as well as actually getting paying clients? Yeah, well, I, I think it, I, I tell people that if they want to have, I think, a fulfilling lifelong career, they've got to do the personal projects. And in order to get the projects to pay, I think that you really have to have a strong vision and a strong Voice. I, mm -hmm. I just think it's absolutely critical. Um, mm -hmm. I, I know that I'm not eligible for every job that's out there, but I do know that like when a client does have a need that that fits what I do, it's it's kind of a perfect marriage. And what ends up happening is instead of being told what to do, they really look to me to find out how can we best do this because I hear a lot of photographers that kind of play a little bit more of like the generalist game and they just constantly mm -hmm. complaining about art directors and this and that mm -hmm. it's because I think in that case the art director feels like that person is there to to provide a service according to their vision whereas when they bring me in oftentimes it's because they like my vision and they're able to build on it and so there's a lot more trust there yeah um, for, for me to really to, to push so um, is it viable I, I think that I certainly think it is. I mean, I think there's so many photographers out there that are kind of hitting, you know, this the the nail over and over and over, the same nail over and over and over, and you know, and it's and it's working. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, well, I mean, there's there's a lot in what you're saying. I mean, philosophically, there's a lot in what you're saying because it really does kind of address this uh, this idea of the generalist photographer, especially in the era that we're in, where you actually can be found, whereas before, you, if you had a specialty, you might be lost for a long time until you happen to match into a market that made sense. But in a in an internet savvy world, it seems like um, the differ even the distinction you made before between a well trained tech and uh, who might know more about lighting than any of us or about you know whatever you know how to how to light uh, liquid on a African American, for example, like you know, there's there's such specialties and how to light certain kinds of things, but that idea of having a style and a vision that you're committed to that people are drawn to and hire because of that, and yeah. actually being in the trust business, like you're describing, things they can count on, maybe even beyond the the f photograph. Like I'm one of the, you know, I, I'm a portrait photographer and a wedding photographer, and I'm realizing that the skill set of what the client wants isn't isn't doesn't have everything to do with the photography with the photography at all. It has a lot to do with that kind of their feel and their experience and yeah. um, kind of the whole package. So talk a little bit about 
beyond just the image making, how the rest of your personality and package shows up to the equation to build that kind of trust that would warrant um, the kind of clients you really want to get after? Yeah, I think that's a that's a that's a great question, man. Um, you know, I think I'm led by curiosity first of all, um, and I think that being humble and and curious, you know, can open a lot of doors for you mm -hmm. and get you access to um, people and places and new and ideas that you probably couldn't beforehand. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm trying to avoid like the photograph end of this question, but. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that just being like eternally curious and, and willing to learn is huge. Um, you know, being a good listener is, is helpful too, um, which is, you know, uh, I, I hope I'm an okay listener. <laughs> um, no, well, again, I, I think this is the stuff that I, 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 being curious as a creative person, in a sense, part of me goes, duh, like, I'm least curious when I'm least, or I'm least artistic when I'm least curious. Yet, yeah. I I rarely hear conversations in the photographic com like industry around how to get more curious. How, you know how to be how to be more generous with a client where you're listening to what they're interested in, so that you can actually adapt your vision to what they're really wanting to accomplish and create something even more valuable than you would have. If you just showed sure. up and listened, or showed up with your kind of boiler boilerplate idea, yeah. Um, well, those are radical and, ideas. Yeah, and I, and I think that like you know how that plays out into the client relationship. I, I, and and I think this may be actually where having an art school background really really helps. Exactly. I remember sure. sitting in art school thinking, man, these critiques are like like so lame, <laughs> and it's just all this you know blat babble blah 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 about mm -hmm. nothing. And but I, I'm also been able to take like what I've learned about being able to articulate ideas and values and emotions and like um, expectations of an image or a project and, um, and, and listen to like okay what are we trying to achieve on like beyond just like the, the, the arc of, of a campaign more you know in terms of in terms of like you know taglines and stuff, but more like the emotion and, and, and the uh, the feel and being able to uh, to really learn that language and, and and be able to communicate what it is that you do well and, mm. and what it is that you see in an image, um, I think is really really helpful, really really critical, and mm. um, I think really important too. So, well, man, thank you so much for for being a part of this conversation. I I, uh, I hope that we'll have a chance to meet in person one of these days. Uh, th th you're you're definitely the kind of guy that I'd I'd like to buy coffee with and, and get to know better. Uh, and I and I'd also love to hear more as your as your own career continues and have you back on because I think what you're tapping into uh, is the kind of thing that our our listeners in particular they're they're just starving for, and I think our industry is starving for is this kind of focused, tight, committed. Um, humble, active creativity that is somehow viable in in a marketplace that, for some, seems really stable and for others seems ridiculously uh, treacherous. And uh, <laughs> I, I think you're you you kind of you give a ton of hope for folks who are who are trying to do this. So, so again, thank you for being being here. Um, yeah. If if people want to track you online or follow you on Twitter or whatever, wh where is the best? What wh wh how do they do that? Yeah, I, um, it's sort of breaking up on my end, but I, uh, you can find me at um, johnbob.com, J-O-N-B-O-B. -B. You can also find me on Facebook if you just do a search for Jonathan Robert Willis Photographer. Okay. Maybe a little asterisk in there just to make it complicated. And Twitter is just Jonathan underscore Willis. So. Great. Yeah, and I think all those links, if you sort of dig into my website, they're, they're in there. Got it. Some. Well, thanks, cool. Jonathan. Thank you so much, and uh, look forward to talking to you again soon. Yeah, man, this has been a pleasure. Thanks. Hey, by, by the way, in case you guys are wondering, the way we met was we were introduced by uh, um, Todd Henry, the author of and founder of Accidental Creative, and uh, we sh we probably should give the guy props here. Go over yes. to Accidental Creative because that guy he is he's brilliant, has incredible, uh, inspiring, creative content around how to how to do this work better. So uh, we'd be remiss to not mention a good old Todd. So that's um, right. Man. All right. Thanks so much. Talk to you later. All right. See you. Thank you. See you.